now tuned in to the cold hard truth. Cayman's number one hard-hitting live podcast show, where we feature some straightforward conversations on political, social, and celebrity news, and all things happening in the Cayman Islands and around the world. This show was created to give the people a voice and a means of being involved and informed without any filters. Sometimes it gets crazy, but we always keep it real. We bring you the tea. Piping hot, so grab your favorite beverage and join the conversation via WhatsApp at 324-1612. Email tips at caymanmorrowroad.com. Now, here's your host, Sandy Hill, broadcasting live from the beautiful Cayman Islands. Some important news for you. Interesting news. It's Blake and Darren's filling the tea with Sandy. Came in news headline today from CMR. Morning, Sandy. How are you? Hey. Good morning. Perfect time. <laughs> Sorry, I had to close the right. door. You've had a time of just right. Yes. How's good your, morning. How's good your morning, morning going? everybody. What's going on? How's it going? Yeah, good. Can so you what's hear me? The latest? Yep. What's the latest? What's happening? Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> there's uh, lawsuits all over the place. Oh, my. Uh, which are interesting. Some people suing government, of course. Who's suing who? Well, Doctors Hospital is suing the Cayman Islands government. I heard something about that. What's what's that all about? Yeah. Well, basically, um, just trying to fix my mic here. What they're saying is the government has refused to put a policy in place that allows there to be any sort of um, clarity in what the criteria are for what they call institutional facilities. So it's a little, it'll get a little bit confusing, but here's a simple version. Yes, please. Um, the law was changed in order to accommodate basically Health City. And some of their employees don't have the regular, um, mm qualifications that we would expect yeah. from a Western institution. So they go through a very different process. Now, normally how it has worked in the past is they've had to do a conversion course. They go to the UK, to Australia, to different places in the Caribbean, and uh, they do a conversion course. They, you know, basically do like an internship and whatever to get the necessary qualifications to work here. So to circumvent that, they've created a new category called institutional facilities. 
And um, the criteria for what makes an institutional facility seems to be very arbitrary and there's nothing in writing. So it's crazy, but I was really surprised when the attorney general responded to their first letter and said, yeah, we don't have any criteria. Mm. So it's just, yeah, you can't, you can't do that sort of thing as a government. You can't create a, we're going to create a whole new category of how physicians can operate in this country, but we have no criteria for it. There's no checks yeah. and balances. There's nothing like it makes no sense at all when you really think about it. And so the argument from the perspective of doctor's hospital is they're saying, listen, this creates an opportunity for um, potentially people who are not really as qualified as you think coming in here and, um, you know, operating and people doing procedures and all sorts of stuff that ordinarily would never be able to do that. Mm -hmm. So I've seen before it's all, it's called, you can't catch me, catch me if you can. Yeah. <laughs> so so uh, we're Doctor's we're Hospital catching. has, they tried, um, you know, in all fairness, they did reach out to the government on several occasions saying, you know, we need answers to this. And in the last occasion, they said, can you fix it? They were ignored. Um, we were on top of this from last year. I believe we did an interview in January of 2020 with Dr. Mahanti, who expressed why um, it was a, really at the time quite a controversial um, bill that the um, then Minister of Health, Dwayne Seymour, was trying to push through um, the health practice law. And it ended up passing, of course, because, you know, their government was in power. But a lot of the physicians here were like, hold on, there's a lot of things that are wrong with this. Um, in fact, even changing how you can sue um, different medical facilities. So that was one thing that Ezra Miller spoke to as well at the time. So there were a lot of concerns. They pushed it through anyway. And now it's kind of the subject of, you know, what's probably going to be a huge lawsuit. Wouldn't those checks and balances come from the chief medical officer or his office or that's not something? Well, there has to be something in the law that gives him that, him or her right that power. Her. Got it. And right. if there isn't, then that's where, you know, like they said, it's arbitrary. Like maybe you have one chief medical um, officer who's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to have I'm going to do all this stuff. But there's no legal um, right that. for him to do any of it, really. Mm -hmm. So that's why, you know, law is actually really important. I keep telling people, every, everybody, in my opinion, should at least have a basic understanding of their legal rights, not necessarily a law degree, but that wouldn't probably wouldn't hurt um, because you'd be surprised how the law intersects every aspect of your life. From the moment you're literally born, you pop out the law, you know, you're a legal person and everything you do from there has some legal implications. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. What else is happening? So um, we have an update on the patient who's in the hospital um, because of COVID. So yeah. they are improving. A lot of people were questioning whether or not they were vaccinated. So we did confirm with, um, you know, the travel K-Man team that they are not, con uh, not vaccinated. So, you know, right now there's this whole debate with people who are refusing to get vaccinated because mm -hmm. their argument is, why bother if I'm still going to catch COVID? And it's like, mm, well, you do realize not. it's not so much about catching it as staying alive. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I know people who are vaccinated right now, and I talked about it earlier, who have who ha caught COVID again. And yes, of course, you can still experience symptoms yeah. and do all that. But chances are you're not, not going to die. die. And that's the point of it. Exactly. I don't. I, and also, you it's also. It's going to be more like the flu. Well, and that's the thing, you diminish like passing on other variants, letting, you know, I, I, yeah. I you, you know, know what, and that's probably what COVID will end up being at some point yeah. down the road is it, it will just be, end up being the flu, you know, you'll be vaccinated. You'll, you'll get it like a common flu and then you'll have some, you'll be down for the count for a couple of days and then it'll be over. Yeah. That's what yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. Cause all these variants, like each variant that comes out seems to be a little bit scarier than the previous yeah. one. So I'm not sure if it'll ever be like the flu. But uh, you remember now we've never had to do well, like a vaccination effort. Well, a virus, you, right? a virus doesn't a it's virus crazy. doesn't want to kill you, right? A virus wants to be able to spread and live and spread and live. So I don't know. I think some viruses want to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they take down whatever host they have to. to move yeah, on to another host. they they yeah. they want to keep going from one person to the next. But if they kill yeah. you in the process, then they won't be able to spread. So w w would it be more contagious? Yes, but. Uh, I think you're seeing deaths go down, at least for Delta variant, but it's, it is definitely more contagious and, and will still make you sick, quite sick. Mm -hmm. Now, here is um, a bit of interesting news on the world front. Um, the Himalayan kingdom of Bhutan has managed to vaccinate 90% of 
of their population. So this is a bit of really? amazing news, actually. Yes. I mean, this is crazy. Um, South Asian Kingdom, they have about 770,000 people. And of course, you know, geographically where they're at, it's, it's difficult to even get there, right? So they're between India and China, high altitude, remote mountain villages, um, nomadic herds, extreme weather. All of these were obviously um, challenges to health workers, but they literally went door to door, it seems like, and they've done it. And out of the 530,000 eligible people, that could get the vaccine, they have vaccinated 480,000 people. Wow. wow. That's, That's amazing. Cool. See, you can do it. Yeah. Yes, I, absolutely. I said something, and it is the uh, Caribbean update for the uh, vaccine, the vaccine tracker, COVID-19 vaccine tracker for the Caribbean. Uh, popul mm -hmm. It's percentage of population vaccinated by country in the Caribbean. And the very top in the Caribbean is Bonaire. They vaccinated apparently 75% of the population. Wow, yes. I think we're number two. Well, I was going to say we're number two, but on here yeah. it says we're seventy-four percent of the population. So, are we yes. at seventy-four percent? Where's um, there? how's that? And then number know, that number keeps up. that number keeps sliding because I could swear that yesterday it was like not quite seventy percent. So I, you know, I keep looking at these numbers and I'm like, mm, I guess that census this year is going to be really critical for them to get that done, so yeah. that we can actually get a fix on what the population is. I mean, it's shocking to think that as small as Cayman is, we don't even seem to know what our population size is. That's just crazy to me, but. Well, let's put up know. some roadblocks and start counting people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Can we all just go get in line? Let's just all go yes. stand in line. What's the operation they're doing right now? RCA operation, here. get in line? Is it Cracker? No, no it's not Cracker. Which no. one is it? <laughs> I can't remember the I name. Think done with the the it, operation. Should, it should be I called that Cracker. To... It's something to do with a Cracker or cheese. I can't remember. I know it's some, something <laughs> like that. It know. should what be it? called Nutcracker. So according to the latest figures from yesterday evening, 70% um, have had at least one dosage and 67% have completed mm -hmm. the two courses. So that was as of yesterday evening. Yeah, see, but this is the thing. Who knows, like, these, this um, study could have a different population record. And then right. all the, uh, we don't, I don't even realize, like, they, we had a different population when we started this and then we changed it, right? Yes, exactly. Oh, I, yeah. So, I mean, I think we all, I think we have to go back to the, to the idea that we all stand in line, get counted. <laughs> We're just going to have to start from zero here. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Yes. That's kind of crazy. Um, but yeah, so that's all interesting stuff. Lots of things going on around the Caribbean. For example, the Bahamas has now gone back into strict restrictions. They're having a rise. And, Isn't Jamaica uh, going into a shutdown again, lockdown? Sorry, who's that? Jamaica. Yeah, so Jamaica is doing um, curfew hours. Yeah, that's right. Curfew. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and they're also they've also announced that their teachers are going to the ones who are vaccinated are going to receive preferential treatment versus those who are not vaccinated. I'm surprised they're not mandating it yet. So that's kind of interesting. But um, well, we talked yeah. about it yesterday. You know, uh, Al Thompson, Al T said, if you want a Christmas. Christmas bonus yeah. this year, you better get vaccinated. Yeah, the, well, we did that story is, on, I think it was Monday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he didn't he didn't quite say, uh, we actually spoke with him as well. He hasn't quite decided. It's kind of an odd thing. He mentioned the bonus in his letter, but he didn't say that you're not going to get your bonus if you're I think that's a great vaccinated. idea. But, you know, the the feeling there is it's, it is tied in to the bonus. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, look, I think um, it's his business. He can do what he wants with absolutely. it. And it's, you know, you, yeah. you're free to it's not incentive. work there if you don't want to. I'm or sorry. Free, what, yeah. Was the government not giving away TVs to get vaccinated? What, what yeah. Can, yeah. And yeah. LT go, hey, you want a Christmas bonus? Yeah. Get vaccinated. I think they were giving away hamburgers. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it's going to be a fair point. I think that a lot of companies and governments will start to mandate vaccinations. And, you know, I think people need to accept um, some people see this as, oh, you're forcing me. And it's like, no, you still have a choice. Right. Yeah, we are. I mean, yeah. <laughs> that's right. We are. Just yeah, in a way, but you still have a choice. I'm sorry. Do do they not enforce or require you to wear a seatbelt when you're driving your car? Otherwise, you, you get fined. Is that for your safety? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, okay. That's, do you, do that's, you, that, that, do you that have to wear a helmet? Be, do you get... have to wear a helmet while, while riding a motorcycle? Well, for your do safety? you not get vaccinated for other stuff? That's what I would say. Um, Like, I have to show my kids' yeah. vaccination record for them to be able to yeah. go to school. school. Um, okay. If I want to go to certain parts of the world, I have to show certain vaccines that I've had. Yeah. I mean, it's... I absolutely. I think that people all go back to they keep saying it's an experimental. Okay, but it's not. I mean, it, they've been working on this 
kind of vaccine for mm-hmm. many years over since before COVID nineteen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Cars. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yep. All right. Thanks, Sandy. So we'll catch you tomorrow right now uh, with you guys Sandy. Have Hill. a great day. And we'll see you tomorrow. Don't forget tomorrow's old school Friday. So oh, yes. I'll think hey, about, how about this. Song. How about this? I was thinking about doing a specific year tomorrow. Okay. Okay. So yeah. Sandy, pick pick a year. Say 1942. Oh, Say 1942. <laughs> That's really old school. No, uh, 1985. 85. Yeah. Mm. Mm, 85. I like 85. Do you? I do. I, my sister was born that year. All right. I'll do 1985 tomorrow. Okay. That's what yes, you want. And I will have a I'll have a song ready. Make sure the song's from 1985. I know. I'm gonna start looking. Right. <laughs> I'm trying to remember what, like, I don't even know what I was doing in 85, right. but it's gonna be Michael, Michael Jackson probably. Lionel Richie around there. Well, that was <laughs> yeah. definitely Madonna time. Um, so maybe a Madonna yeah. song. Madonna about um, I was gonna say flock of seagulls. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It'll be uh-huh. 80 day tomorrow. All right, Sandy, awesome. we'll catch you tomorrow. Have a good have one. Have a good one. Bye. All right. All right, folks. Good morning. Good morning. Get up. Get out of bed. Let's get this train on the road. So a couple of things here. Um, breaking record 689,000 people pinged by NHS COVID app. Let's see what this is all about. I can't keep up. All these COVID applications and COVID variants. And oh, my gosh, it's a lot. But, you know, we kind of give you a little snippet here on this program of uh, what's going on around the world so that you can stay on top of it. Cause I know how difficult it is to know what's going on in the world. So let's, let's find out. Let's see, what are they saying? Is the NHS app. So this, these, this isn't legally binding in the same way that if someone's called up by an NHS contact tracer, they have to isolate. This is someone who's been in the vicinity and has therefore got this alert telling them to self-isolate. But as you say, another record-breaking week. So 689,000 people told to self-isolate uh, in the week ending last Wednesday. Uh, the week before that, the figure was just under 620,000. So a significant increase we're saying the number was down slightly in Wales, but was up significantly uh, in England. And obviously this ties into the concern we have seen around the so-called pandemic, the number of people being told to self-isolate, the impact that that is having uh, on businesses and on the workforce. And it ties in too um, with this issue around compliance. And there are separate figures out today from the Office for National Statistics that suggest that compliance uh, is coming down. Overall, it is still high, but it is coming down particularly uh, among young people since May. So people aged between 18 uh, and 34, uh, one in four uh, of those people in that age bracket have not been following those self-isolation rules. And we know uh, that this week the government uh, revealed their list of key workers that won't have to follow self-isolation rules uh, in the same way. We know that later on in August those rules are going to be scrapped uh, altogether. But but as you say, another record-breaking week uh, and more than 680,000 people told to self-isolate on the app within the space of a week. All right, good folks. So they're trying to figure it out. These are definitely unprecedented times. (laughs) We're using applications and all sorts of stuff to try to track COVID and to figure out exactly what is going on. It's crazy. Wow. Life is so different (laughs) before 2020, right? I got some oatmeal this morning. I actually made it for my daughter and she wouldn't eat it. So here I am now trying to not make it go to waste. Uh, I'm not a fan of oatmeal, I gotta tell you. But anyway. Good morning, Irvelyn. Good morning, Marshall. I want to take a bite. I'm going to turn the camera off so you guys don't see me eating. Good morning, Morna. It actually isn't that bad, you know. This is the maple something something one. Uh, maple sugar or something. I don't know. But uh, yeah, this isn't too bad. Mm. Good morning, Leroy. Olivia. Miss Bernita. Mommy got her mug. Good morning. Miss Morna still waiting on her. She's going to start cussing me. Brandon. 
Miss Bonnie. Louie. Mm hmm. Karen. Odette. David. Buenos Dias. Felicia, how are you? John is here for it. Dawn says, good morning to everyone in all three islands. Beautiful. Happy Thursday, or as we like to say, Friday part one. You start to get in the mood a little bit for, um, for Friday. Buenos dias, Elizabeth. Cece is here. Good morning, Cece. Uh, Cece, we're going to be talking about the beach cleanup and the sargasm and all sorts of other stuff. Chanel, beautiful Chanel is joining us. Uh, Iva says, watching this morning from Turks and Caicos. What? What are you doing in TCI? Oh, did you go with the, um, did you go with the bas the football team? Ooh, la la. Nice. Um... Oh, beautiful. So I just received a thing that says women's FIFA friendlies today at 7 p.m. The Cayman Islands versus Bahamas. I wonder if there's going to be um, a link for where the games can be watched. Maybe we can grab a feed from somewhere. Um, let me see here now. Hmm. Oh. Someone just reached out to me about a missing dog. Hmm. Oh my. Hmm. Um okay, let me try and find the um I'm going to try to find the original message here, but okay. Seems like we've discovered where this dog is. Mm. All right. We'll get to the bottom of it. Mm -mm. Um, so there's a couple dogs right now that are actually missing. And, um, I'm hoping that they, one person thought that they saw a dog um, that was missing at um, the Humane Society. So that's always the first place to check, folks, because, you know, they probably get a lot of dogs being returned to them. Morning, Jackie. Larry's here. Siobhan, good morning. Hello, Miss Perla. Miss Joy joining us from Texas. Yes, the national, the women's senior national team is playing in Turks and Caicos, 4 p.m. K-Man time. Oh, okay. Oh. Um, Carol is saying that hopefully, oh, I don't know what vaccine they use. We can find out. But hopefully Bhutan used a proper vaccine, not like some of those other ones who are using this Chinese knockoff stuff. I don't know. Listen to me. Why can't the Chinese... I have had such high expectations of the Chinese when they do something. Including when they get it wrong. They're going to get it wrong in an epic way, I think. But, you know, mind you, I don't really know why my expectations are so high. Because they make a lot of crap sometimes, too. A lot of cheap stuff. But I would have thought that they would have been on top of their game with the whole vaccine thing. But Chow, as Carol said, they've been making a lot of vaccines. They're only 60, 65% um, useful when it comes to keeping you out of the hospital sort of thing. Um, so good luck. Good morning, Miss Daisy. Miss Carol says that app is ridiculous in the UK. You get pinged if you pass somebody in the street. You need to delete it. <laughs> Oh my God. Big brother child. Everybody, all the conspiracy theorists is like, first they're trying to kill you off with a vaccine. That's the first conspiracy. And then 
when they develop the um for, no first they're trying to kill you off with the virus and then when they develop the vaccine then it's like no they're trying to um put stuff in us um with the vaccine they're trying to microchip you they're trying to trace you all over the world all sorts of stuff I know it isn't, I must admit, and it really isn't the old fashioned oat because uh, I don't have a whole lot of time to sit in front of the stove, especially in the morning. So this is the packet one, which I'm aware they say isn't the best, but I'm figuring, can I use the half a bread, half a loaf of bread theory? Like some oats are better than no oats. <laughs> I don't know. Um, buenos dias to Miss Inez. Miss Asanya is here. Good morning, Janine. Wee oui, wee, oui, thank you so much. Um, I'll try to see if I can find a link for the game. If you know what's playing, let us know. Good morning to the lovely Megan. We've got uh, 39 other people watching with her on YouTube this morning. Blissful Powell, good morning to you. Elizabeth and Keisha, Miss Rosie are all here. So yes, I'm, I'll eat a few spoonsful. I find that actually this is why you should eat oats. It is very filling regardless. And so I can never eat a whole little bowl of oats anyway. So when I make it for my daughter and she eats like four spoonsful, I'm like, she did good. Speaking of which, her appetite um, has really been picking up. Like she's enjoying snack time now. <laughs> When I pick her up from school, I had to pick up early yesterday. She had to go get her hair done. But um, when I picked her up, she was like, I'm starving. I was like, oh, really? Can we go to the salon first and then I'll get you some cake? No, no, no. I have to go right now. I was like, okay. And I think that time of day is normally snack time at school. So she was really like, her tummy is rumbling for snacks or whatever. Um... But yeah, she uh, she's having a fantastic time in school. It's so interesting to see kids like grow up. You know, she's gonna be five in a couple of weeks. I'm so excited about that. Um, so <sighs> yes. So one of the things that um, I wanted to talk about is the fact that um, the Olympics has gotten and taken a very interesting turn. So I know we were discussing just briefly yesterday how Simone um, Biles withdrew from Thursday's individual all-around finals in Tokyo. And um, the day before, she decided um, that she was not going to, um, I think she withdrew from something else as well. So listen, the good news is there have been a lot of people who've been extremely supportive of her because I think professional athletes understand the struggles of um, what they do. I don't think if you're, not a professional athlete that you have any idea what's involved. I remember many, many years ago, like I told you, gymnastics is one of my favorite Olympic sports. Maybe it is. I don't know if I could pick a single favorite, but it's definitely up there. And one of the interesting things about gymnastics is that it actually takes a toll on your body. So do you ever look at gymnasts and you think to yourself, oh, they're always so petite and cute. Like, how does that work? Well, the reason why they're so petite and cute is basically all of the moves that they make stunts their growth. This is crazy. But these kids start at four, five, six years old to get to her level, uh, practicing tumbling and jumping and whatever. And apparently those movements are not always natural. And the body isn't meant to do those things. And it's all in the name of sports, right? And I get it. You know, they love it. They enjoy it. The highs and the lows. You know, this young lady has been through a lot, actually. Um, she basically said on Tuesday that she's struggling 
with her mental health and the pressure and weight of expectation has taken its toll. And I applaud her for um, putting her mental health first and for recognizing that even in the midst of what could be a record-breaking situation for her, I think yesterday we said that she was like one medal away from having the most medals ever. Um, you know, she has to recognize what the most important thing is. And it's not that other piece of metal that doesn't bring back your sanity. It's really about trying to keep some sort of balance and their lives are not in balance as it is. So they spend a lot of time, you know, performing at a professional athletic level that requires them to psychologically and mentally be in a certain headspace as well as physically be at the top of their game. And without a doubt, um, she has done that in previous times. She's basically carried the, the women's Olympic team. And so um, now that she's pulling out, you know, I suppose there've been some people who've been critical of that decision, but thankfully a lot of athletes have come forward and supported her and her sponsors. Cause you know, these guys, the way they make their money, they don't make money from going from the Olympics necessarily, but if they are a gold medal, gold medal winner, um, they make money from sponsorship deals. So she has a number of sponsorship deals and those companies have said that they are sticking by her decision which I think is fantastic. They're not pressuring her in any way. They are saying, listen, for you to be a top notch athlete, one of the things that you need to always consider and have a look at is the state of your mental health. And um, you need to know when to push your body, when you can push your body that little extra, and when you have to say, no, this is too much. Right? Because your mind breaks, that's part of your body. And so I saw a couple interesting things online that I thought I would share with you guys that really brought the point home. This one um, actually made mention of when she made this, she made a statement saying that she had something called the twisties. And apparently that might sound cute and whatever to us, like, oh gosh, what's the twisties? But when a gymnast says that, it actually means something very, very serious. And I had no idea. I didn't know anything about the twisties. But when I saw this and I read the details of it, I thought to myself, wow, this is really, really quite something. So I thought maybe I'd explain it to you guys. If I found it interesting, you might find it interesting as well. But basically what the twisties is, and this is what this, um, this is what this says here. Uh, according, according to the Washington Post, when Simone Biles pushed off the vaulting table on Tuesday, she entered terrifying world of uncertainty. In the Olympic team final, Biles planned to perform a two and a half twisting vault, but her mind chose to stall after just one and a half twists instead. She subsequently withdrew from the team competition and then the all around finals a day later, describing what went wrong during that vault as having a little bit of the twisties. The cute sounding term well known in the gymnastics community describes a frightening predicament. When gymnasts have the twisties, they lose control of their bodies as they spin toward or spin through the air. And this is how it was described by another elite gymnast. Simply, your life is in danger when you're doing gymnastics. A former elite gymnast, this is from Sean uh, Melton, who dealt with the twisties through his entire career. And then when you add this unknown of not being able to control your body while doing these extremely dangerous skills, it adds an extreme level of stress. And it's terrifying, honestly, because you have no idea what is going to happen. 
Biles performs some of the most, some of the world's hardest skills, including a double twisting, double tuck dismount off beam and a triple twisting double tuck on floor. To execute these elements safely, she said, you have to be 100% or 120%. Because if you're not the slightest bit, you can get hurt. So I think that that puts it in perspective because I've never even heard of the twisties before. But that is quite shocking to hear that um, this is actually what happens to these gymnasts and their bodies. Now listen to this one which is even more shocking. Um, trying to see if I can increase this one. This one's a little <clears throat> bit harder to see. So give me one second. I'm going to open it full screen separately. All right. So this one says, uh, the women, the woman on the left, right, is Elena Mukina. Never heard of her, to be honest. Um, the 1978 women's gymnast world champion. She broke her leg and was not per permitted the appropriate time to heal. Soviet gymnast coaches, and oh God, remember when the Soviets dominated the world of gymnastics? It was always them and then the Americans. Well, now it's like between the Russians and the Americans, but at the time it was the Soviets. And um, they really pushed their athletes as a whole to a completely different level. And oftentimes um, it was an unacceptable level, even drugging them and, you know, doping charges and all sorts of stuff. But anyway, um, she broke her leg and was not permitted the appropriate time to heal. Soviet gymnast coaches pressured doctors to remove her cast early so she could start training for the 1980 olympics she protested heavily as she knew her leg was not properly healed and would not withstand the grueling training regimen typical of her sport trainers and coaches dismissed her concerns and forced her to continue her training while practicing the thomas salto which has since been banned for being too dangerous. I mean, imagine that. Oh my God. These gymnasts really push their bodies. It's crazy. So it's since been banned for being too dangerous. She under rotated due to her newly weakened leg and landed on her chin. She broke her neck, which rendered her a quadriplegic for the rest of her life. She was 20 years old at the time and died at age 46. How incredibly tragic. No doubt. Uh, she would probably maybe even still be alive today. Horrible. Mm -mm -mm. So reports from Tokyo that Simone Biles does not trust her own body, her own mind and body right now, given the high level of difficulty and danger of the skills she performs, is it asking a lot to expect her to continue to perform before that self-trust is restored? By pulling out of the team finals, she's listening to her body and her mind and giving herself enough time to heal so she can continue being the badass queen that she was meant to be. Simone is doing what Elena was not permitted to do, be a voice for her own body and mental health. Anybody who would, margin a lot, who would malign Simone for pulling out of the team finals and daring them to settle for the, and yeah, daring them to settle for the silver medal should consider how they'd feel if instead of reading the headline, Simone Biles pulls out of team finals, they were greeted with Simone Biles paralyzed during dismount. And if you ask the rest of the US team, if they'd rather have a healthy Simone Biles or a gold medal, you know damn well how they'd answer and they wouldn't have to think for a second. So some very interesting commentary on uh, what is happening in the world of gymnastics at the moment, on the world stage. So Paul Pogba, I think he's a football um, guy here, it's reported that um, 
He has become the latest sporting icon to offer his support to American gymnast superstar Simone Biles after she withdrew from her individual all-around final to focus on her mental health. Uh, the 24-year-old said that she was struggling with her mental health and that the pressure and weight of expectation had taken its toll. But apparently she's received a lot of support from the sporting world and her fellow athletes and Manchester United star Pogba, is that how his name is pronounced? is the latest to reach out to Biles. In a tweet, he said, a moment of undeniable strength from um, at Simone Biles. And he says, we always focus on the physical aspect of health, but the mental aspect is just as important. When you take care of both, you will flourish in life. Hashtag Sim Simone Bowles goat. So um, a lot of athletes have come forward to support her decision. And I think at the end of the day, it is her body. Um, so she has a right to choose. Yes, she's supporting her country, but if she isn't ready or something happens, I mean, for me, this is a moment by moment situation. You can't go in and say, well, she was ready the week she left for Tokyo. That's not quite how it works in the moment. Like she said, her body was doing something that her mind wasn't telling it to do. And I can't even imagine what that disconnect is like. Uh, U.S. Olympian swimming legend Michael Phelps has also come forward supportive of her. He is the most decorated Olympian of all times with a total of 28 medals. And he talked about the need for mental health resources for Olympic athletes after her withdrawal. And he said back in 2018, he suffered from depression himself and contemplated suicide after the 2012 London Games. So here you have these elite athletes and we get to see one side of their journey, um, but we don't see the, the, the downside, right? So we don't see them suffering with mental health issues. Uh, we don't see them suffering with depression. We don't see them being suicidal. You know, we know that he, Michael Phelps, struggled with drugs um, during his career as well. And this is the realities that these young athletes are having to deal with. So speaking to the athlete, uh, I guess, magazine, he said, I hope this is an opportunity for us to jump on board and to even blow this mental health thing even more wide open. We carry a lot of weight on our shoulders and it's challenging, especially when we have the lights on us and all of these expectations being thrown on top of us. We're human beings, nobody's perfect. It's okay to not be okay. It's okay to go through ups and downs and emotional roller co coasters. The biggest thing is we all need to ask for help when we go through these times. It was hard for me to ask for help. I felt like I was carrying, like Simone said, the weight of the world on my shoulders. It's a tough situation. I hope this is an eye-opening experience. Um, Three-time Olympic medalist Paul Gazol, who's a Spanish basketball player, also sent a message to her saying all of my support to Simone. Mental health is a key component of her health and it must be a priority. We need the sports world to focus on emotional and mental well-being a lot more. So um, others such as Michelle Obama, tennis icon Billie Jean, Billie Jean King, Coco, is that Goff? And former football star Landon Donovan all sent messages as well um, of support. So this is a young lady, um, Max Whitlock said, you've pushed boundaries time and time again, rest up and take care. So a lot of support. Um, she's trending at Simone Biles. And I think this is an absolutely positive thing. People saying that she's courageous for stepping forward and admitting that um, something, something is off. And uh, I think it's a lesson for all of us that um, no matter what, you know, people see you and they make assumptions about your, your mental health 
and your well-being and they just don't know unless you unless you've walked in somebody's shoes and let's be honest you can't walk in anybody else's shoes you might have experienced some of the same things but everyone is different everyone reacts differently to situations and um you know it it just it just is one of those things where unfortunately we don't know we don't really know um what what she is going through exactly i mean she's tried to explain it to us so that we can get a glimpse of what's happening but the truth of the matter is you know only simone knows exactly what's going on in her head and um with her body so i applaud her as well i think take whatever time you need nothing earth shattering is going to happen if you don't win that gold medal trust me Good morning to um, Miss Elizabeth. She says she did not quit. An athlete knows their body. And uh, being a perfectionist athlete, she knew that it, she was in danger, in the danger zone. Yeah. And I think that for someone like Simone to even pull out after all that she's been through, that's a real indication of precisely probably how dangerous of a situation she actually is in or was in. And I hope that she um, will get whatever mental support she needs when she leaves Tokyo. Good morning, Miss Brenda. She says, I applaud her. People need to listen. When someone says they're not well, believe them. She's done what any sensible person would do, take care of herself first. And she was signal signaling this for a long time. Um, so I have some um, updated photos. From K Man's Olympic journey. Give me one second. Let me just pull these up. Um, some photos from the watch party here. And today, tomorrow morning, uh, Brett Fraser will be swimming. So our young lady did extremely well yesterday, um, Julian in the heats. And of course, um, again, you know, everybody wants to win. Everybody wants to be on the world stage in terms of a medal. But in my mind, our athletes are winners just for going and even participating. Because let's be honest, to even make it to the Olympics is a humongous accomplishment. Never to be underrated. So here we have the moms of Olympic athletes, Kimar Hyman, Brett Frazier, uh, Shalisa Ray at the CIOC event on Friday. This was the opening ceremonies watch party held at the Westin. And um, we have, I saw this one actually, and I thought this was so cute. Representing Team Cayman. They came out in full form in their um, Cayman shirts. Absolutely beautiful. So Brett is uh, coming up. Like I said, there is a time difference. So for us, it's probably going to be like maybe, is it five o'clock in the morning when he will be up? But he's definitely coming up here shortly. Um, so we wish him the best. I think he's been practicing. And I'm sure that, um, you know, whatever he does, he, he has accomplished a lot. Uh, is this his second or third Olympics? Because I think he's been a couple times now. So Tokyo 2020, uh, there's another absolutely fine athlete. All right, good folks. So uh, let's talk about this morning. Um, I had an idea yesterday. This is his third Olympics. Thank you for that. Uh, okay. So, folks. Uh, there was a lot of sargasm. I don't know if you guys saw this. On the um, 
beaches. Well, I've, I haven't been to Seven Mile Beach, but I heard it's all over Seven Mile Beach as well. So last week, Friday, I went to Ozzy's um, fish shop there, Grape Tree, get my little Friday fix of uh, a fish. And um, I was taken aback by the amount of sargasm that was actually present on the beach. And the the ladies there told me, well, it was just clean like a day or two ago, Sandy. So it's actually not that bad. And I thought to myself, what? Are you kidding me? They said, no, this is an improvement over what it was. And you know that stuff stinks. I was like, whoa, that doesn't sound pleasant. But anyway, um, someone messaged me yesterday and they said, oh my gosh, have you seen it on Seven Mile Beach? And I said, no. So I put up the photo of it. I'm just looking for the video on my phone so I can share with you guys in case you didn't see it. So I put up the photo of it on, uh, the video of it on Uh, oh gosh, where is it now? On Facebook. And um, as I was putting it up, it occurred to me, just really on a whim, why don't we uh, let me try to see if I can find it here. Why don't we um, have a program because you know you clean it one day and it's back the next and i know it's difficult for doe and all these other people to go out there and clean it up but why don't we have a program where we're putting um right now you know tourism is closed we have people receiving that 1500 per month stipend why are we actually putting those individuals to work now i'm not trying to castigate them in any bad light but if you're receiving the stipend and you're not working, because I understand some of them are receiving it and working a full-time job. But if you're receiving it and you're actually not working, why don't you work to uh, help with different projects? So this sargasm project could be one of those such projects, but it doesn't have to be the only one. Oh, yes. Here's, is that it? Oh, gosh. No, that's not it. There's a lot of other things, folks, that we could be focusing on. So tourism is shut down. I'm still shocked as to why we're not doing more beautification projects on the waterfront and in town. I'm just saying. That wall in town needs to be painted um, on the right there in Harbor Drive, which is now Seafarer's Way. The whole area needs some sprucing up. Why has it not been done? Only God knows. So why not? I want you guys to tell me what you think about this idea. We had one person who seemed to have taken great offense to it, and only God knows why. But why not um, put together teams? Obviously, somebody's got to organize this. Of individuals to go to different locations on island and actually you know, help clean up painting jobs, clean up sargasm, um, little renovation jobs for the elderly. In my mind, there's absolutely so much that they could do. All sorts of beautification projects, gardening projects, community projects, uh, going in the schools, perhaps helping them with some of the things that they need done. Here's why I'm thinking that this is a good idea. A couple of things. Number one, there's no such thing as a free meal in life. <laughs> Just basic Aunt Lottie's Pearls of Wisdom 101. Nothing is free in life. So if nothing is free in life, right now um, you're getting money. No fault of your own because the borders are shut down. But there's something to be said for remaining active in your life. And getting up every morning with some sort of a routine. And I think it's dangerous for people to now be going into two years without employment. What are they doing all day? I mean, I'm curious. If you, if you were in tourism, what are you doing with yourself right now? You might be going to start mad, I would think. Because I can't imagine 
getting up in life um, with no purpose. So this is also a little bit of for their own mental health and well-being, getting up to say, okay, well, this week I'm assigned to this particular project and I know I'm going to go and help beautify the district of Baden Town. We're going to be picking up garbage. We're going to be doing whatever. So you know how every year we have the annual cleanup program, like maybe twice for the year. This could have been, and again, this is where I think the progressive government kind of missed the mark. They could have utilized um, these individuals. It's hundreds of people, maybe even thousands of people who are receiving this stipend. We could have certainly utilized them, even if it's just on a part-time basis, folks. We could have utilized them to, um, you know, get out there and assist with different community projects. Am I wrong for thinking this? Am I crazy? Tell me um, what you guys think here, because I'm thinking that there certainly could have been, um, you know, some organized efforts to actually get people a little bit more involved. So nothing is free in life. That's one argument that I'm going to use to support this idea. The second argument is that it actually is good for the participants to have some purpose and to have uh, something to do, right? Keep some kind of just limber psychologically, physically, it keeps you up and down on a nice little routine of some sort. Tyrone, good morning. Um, oh, Ms. Brenda, thank you so much for asking. It feels a little bit better today. So I did go and, and do the acupuncture treatment yesterday at Physio. Um, and I've noticed an improvement. It's still obviously there, but it does feel a lot better today. So thank you. I really appreciate that. Buenos dias to Alba. Yes. Good idea. Miss uh, Brenda says, good idea. It can also help the elderly with chores. Like I think you could pick, uh, maybe some people would be happy to do like beach cleanups and different projects, whatever, right? Other people would be well suited with helping the elderly with like yard work, again, sprucing up their place. Um, you could have a number of different projects that people could assist with and then give them the choice. Because maybe some people really just love being outdoors in the water and whatever, and that would be kind of what they'd want to do. Um, you know, give them a couple choices of, okay, you can go with team one and this is where they're heading out. This is what they're going to do. It would require some organizing but I think it could be something that is extremely viable. What else are you going to do? And maybe it's a good experience. Who knows? You might get out there and start doing something else. And you might discover that, wow, I actually like painting. Maybe I'll go ahead and see if I can't, you know, get in a painting apprenticeship with some of the painting companies or something. It could, in theory, open up a whole world of opportunities for those individuals. Now, after I posted it, Al Ray says, I think it's a good idea. If you don't have a job, this way you can show your appreciation um, for what your country is doing for you. Not only that, I see mosquito all of a sudden in here. Not only that, but somebody else said, well, actually, it's a great idea. And why stop there? Why not encourage any of you people to do it as well? And I thought, hey, yeah. Now, listen, we have NAU clients who get themselves in trouble because of idleness. So they're receiving NAU rent money and all these other things. They don't work. They can't find a job. Nobody wants to hire them. So why doesn't government devise a program? You're getting your rent paid. So we are going to ask you every month to commit to X number of community hours, community service hours. And it is directly tied in to the money that you're getting. So if you wanna get your rent paid, if you wanna get your groceries paid, again, I don't just show up at Foster's and be like, give me a bag of groceries um, and I'm gonna just walk out the door with it. If I don't pay for it, we got a problem. And the only way that I can pay for it is if I earn money and if I have a job of some sort. So the government, understands that you're in need and we give you money, we give you food vouchers. The question is, what are you giving back to the community? This might not be a popular stance with those of you in NAU, 
But uh, as William Panton said, community creates country. You have an obligation in my mind to not just take what the government has to offer, but to also find a way to give back to the system. Hmm. Hear me out now. People who are in a U clients, there should be a mandatory requirement that they're upskilling themselves. And I know some people who've been on NAU for many, many years. They should be required to take all sorts of training classes, CPR, um, computer classes, literacy classes, anything that could potentially better them as individuals. With the immediate hope of maybe making them employable and more self-reliant, but also giving them basic life skills that they will need no matter where they go and what they do. Hmm. You're on NAU? Here are some requirements. Not just do you need it because you don't have a job, but now we're going to have certain expectations of you. Ms. Wanda says it makes perfect sense to relocate, to relocate resources and funds to needed areas or programs. Ms. Gale, Ms. Jennifer says, agree with you, Sandy. There's a lot on the stipend that uh, do not want the airport to open so they can continue to receive the stipend. What they fail to understand is someone has to pack, to pay back this money for them to just stay home. Also, the government should make it mandatory for persons receiving the stipend to be vaccinated, if not stop the stipend. Uh huh, Ms. Jennifer. Now you just hit a nail on the head that is gonna become a very, very controversial here in a minute. Because I know without a doubt that there are people, I think I heard, and I stand to be corrected, maybe some 500 people on the stipend who are not even vaccinated. You work in tourism, you have to get vaccinated. So you're taking money from government because their borders are closed. And the singular hope we have for reopening our borders, which is to get vaccinated, you won't even do. As Ms. Jennifer said, how concerned are you really about reopening our borders? I think this needs to go to some kind of vote. Maybe I'll put up a poll later on the website. Because I do think it is time for us to pay the piper, so to speak, right? Everyone is making sacrifices right now. And the sacrifice for you is that you're going to do some work. It's not full time by any stretch of the imagination. So maybe you only work three, four days a week. You're not going to be hustling as hard for $1,500, but you've got to do something. Unfortunately, the progressive government put this um, criteria in place or put the um, stipend in place with absolutely no criteria whatsoever. And I get it. At the time, it was, you know, one of those things where it was a rush to just get people the necessary assistance that they needed. So, um, I think that this is something that can be easily done. I mean, it's not ro rocket science here. And I also believe that it will make people think differently about what government assistance is and getting on government assistance. Now, I have someone who said to me um, that they are struggling with NAU because NAU puts them through the ringer. And I said, well, <laughs> I, I can't really say anything about that because I know the reason why they do it is because there are so many people who are taking advantage of the system.
and we all suffer. Whether it's one bad apple or 50 bad apples, the truth of the matter is we're all going to suffer as a result of other people's actions. Community creates country goes both ways. So that can be a very positive message that community creates country. And it can also be a very negative message. Yes, community creates country, but there's certain obligations that come with that. I'm just saying. It's time that we rethink this whole idea of just handing people money with no strings attached and no obligations attached. For the rest of us, we live in a world where there are always strings attached. You don't get paid unless you show up to work, for example. You know, you do certain things, your money is going to be cut. You exceed your vacation time, your sick time, whatever. There are obligations that come with the money that you receive. So I say it's time that we change the mindset of our community and start having some expectations. Now, Louis, um, thank you so much for this comment. Louis says more uh, we as Caymanians invest in the beautification and upkeep of our home we would increase in pride as a nation to keep it the way that it is. The Bible says where we invest, so is our heart also. I like that. That's beautiful. Um, El Rey says meals on wheels, food delivery. Mm. Another really great idea. There are so many projects out there, folks, that need the help. So many NPOs that could really utilize people. Carmelie said, um, years ago, we had a beautification committee. And I remember that I was part of it in the West Bay District. And we used to get them out there and do a lot of cleanup. Good morning to the beautiful Izzy. Izzy said we should list all the community work that needs to be done and see where people fit in. Musicians could play for children or elderly or the sick or suffering mental health. Oh my gosh, I love that idea. I almost forgot about the musicians. Thank you, Izzy. Izzy is a musician, you know. She's recently had to return to the world of legal, but at her heart, she would always be a musician. She just can't make it a full-time job right now because of the pandemic. But this is a great idea. Sorry, me and my oatmeal. Um, having musicians also, I'm sure some of them are getting a stipend. You know, Perform at the Pines once a week. Oh, gosh, those old people would love that little company, child. They would absolutely enjoy that. Miss uh -uh -uh. Elizabeth says those people getting the tourism stipend at NAU are sitting on the grape tree all day playing dominoes or playing country music. As you walk through the district of West Bay alone, some yards are simply kept in a deplorable state. A big district cleanup is needed right about now. The other benefit of this, as Miss Elizabeth kind of indirectly pointed out, is what do they say about idle hands being the devil's playground? That's another one Aunt Lottie used to say all the time. She said, keep your hands and your mind busy, and that will keep you out of trouble. Because the devil loves idleness. And... Uh, the, the concept is not lost. That's when you see a lot of things happening because people don't have nothing else to do. So they're sitting on all day playing dominoes, drinking, smoking their little weed. And next thing you know, they start fighting with each other over nothing because they're not got nothing to do. Mm -hmm. Get them to work. Anthony says, indeed, meaningful contributions and give them back. Mm. Mm -hmm. Alray hit the head of the nail here. Reminds me of President J.F. Kennedy's famous words. Ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. I love it. Good morning, Eddie. 
Louis says he spends a lot of time outdoors under a roof. Simply, it offers more to me than I can give back. Yes. So Cece's here for it. Says, um, <laughs> Cece says enough of them come dressed to the T with Brazilian hair, name brand clothes, and partying the weekend and still getting NAU assistance. Child, we know who you're talking about. There's a good hand lot of them. So uh, Jean says not everyone in NAU is capable of doing the beach. No, honey child. We got a whole slew of projects. Not just sargasm cleanup. There's a lot you can do. Unless you are medically unable to work. And 99% of them, that's not the situation at all. They are medically able to work. So unless you fall into that slim category, you would have to pick and choose what you want to do. You have a cooking skill, you can put in the kitchen at Meals and Wheels. There's so many things that, you know, and I think for them, the usefulness, like feeling like, oh, wow, I have purpose. Having purpose in life is really important, whatever your purpose is. That gives you the motivation and the drive to get up every single day and get stuff done. So listen, we're always offering free advice to all the different governments, the progressives government, PAC government, doesn't matter. So I'm going to tell the PAC government now, because we know just like the last government, people listen who are PAC government supporters, please go and tell the leadership that we're giving you this idea for free. There will be no charges for the idea. Community creates country after all. We're doing our part. And so... My goodness, sorry. Ugh. And so we welcome you to take the idea and to run with it. Carol says, this is happening in the UK and the US. Oh, good. Don't want to go back to work after receiving government money. Oh, no, 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 that's not good. I thought you were saying that they were putting them to work. During COVID lockdown and small businesses struggling to find employees. Yes. In fact, Carol, I was watching the news overseas and there's a lot of small businesses, restaurants in particular, in the U.S. who are struggling to find workers. There's a, a shortage. Um, you know, they, they can't find anybody to work. They can't get them back to work. Here are a couple headlines. Why is it so hard? to get restaurant workers back. That was in Bloomberg Markets and Finance. Here's another one. High paying restaurant jobs, high paying in Las Vegas Strip can't find qualified workers. Huh. Here's one from the Daily Show, the real reason workers aren't returning back to work, restaurant workers versus a living wage. So the same issues that we're struggling with Others are struggling with around the world. Here's one. We can't find employees to staff restaurants, says Chicken Salad, uh, Chicken CEO. I don't know who the heck Chicken Salad is. I've never even heard of them. <laughs> but there you go. So there are a lot. Um, restaurants struggling to find employees. One says, Struggling to find restaurant employees, why not pay them more? Maybe that's part of the solution. Here's one. A restaurant is offering $200 to anyone who stays 60 days. <laughs> so they're giving you extra money just to stay. It says that restaurants across America are reopening but are now facing a new crisis. Hungry diners are returning. Um, with millions of... Unemployed chefs, waiting, and bartenders are not. Wow. No, sir. They don't want to get back to work? Hmm. Huh. Mm -mm -mm. So first they had to deal with the pandemic and having to shut down their businesses. And um, now, 
they're having to, and mind you, it's not just restaurant workers. I see another one here about retail workers quitting their jobs in April as well. Let me see which one of these. Um... Might be worth having a look at here. Because it's just crazy what's happening. I mean, in some respects, I find it so hard to believe. I'm like, why wouldn't you go back to work? Um, CC says, I'm not here for mandating this vaccine. We need to respect people's choices to not take the vaccine. That's their right. Well, you have a choice. You always have a choice. Just like the other vaccines in life, if you don't take them, your kids can't go to school. So you have choices. And uh, let's be very honest here, Cece. If people continue with this attitude that they refuse to get vaccinated, we will never be able to open our, our borders. And if you guys do not understand the implications of that, um, what that's going to do to our economy and the deficit the government is already facing will only grow. And like we just said, being in a deficit even if you're unemployed, you might not be thinking about this, but ultimately you and your children will pay the burden for this government being in a deficit. And that deficit is created by the fact that right now the pandemic has hit everyone and we've had our borders closed for almost two years, going into two years. And we cannot continue on that vein. So unless you have some other miracle solution and how to reopen our borders without people dying, you're putting this government in an impossible situation. Now, listen. If you're happy to have people die, here, here, here's the compromise, right? This is the truth that nobody wants to really tell you. This is the, ter- the alternative. You get vaccinated, you have a 90 plus percent of not dying and not being in the hospital. You do not get vaccinated. We're still going to open the country. You have a much higher chance of dying, of getting long haul COVID. Georgetown Hospital doesn't have that many beds in the ICU. So are you willing to deal with the fallout of your children dying, your mother dying, you possibly dying? And when you're in the ventilator, I don't want to hear that, oh, can I get the COVID shot now? Because it's too late. So are you okay? This is my legit question, Cece. Are you okay with this government opening up regardless of what the consequences will be? So Jamaica is shutting back down. BVI is shutting back down. Bahamas is shutting back down. They're putting a curfew in place because people are dying. So this isn't a personal choice. To get the vaccine isn't a personal choice. It is a community choice. You are deciding by not getting the vaccine that, well, yes, you're risking your own life, but more importantly, because that's your personal choice. You can risk your own life. See, if this was just about you risking your life, I wouldn't care. If we reopen the borders and Cece says, well, I'm not going to get vaccinated and she's the only person or only people who decide that are at risk, then I'd be like, fine, that's not a problem because you were taking that choice for your own life. So if you choose to die, then good for you. But that's not how it works. Your choice means that you offer less protection for the entire community. And so my child is at risk because she can't get vaccinated because of your choice. You see, this is where I have a problem. If it was just your choice alone and it only impacted you, I honestly wouldn't care. I'd be like, listen, fling open the borders. They have made their choice and they will live with the consequences. But it's the people who can't get it. Children. Some people who have autoimmune issues or allergies or whatever, who cannot get it. Those are the people whose lives that you're putting at risk that they don't get the choice. You're talking about it's your choice, but they don't get the choice because they can't get it. Because believe me, a lot of those people, knowing what they have suffered with their various issues, would gladly get the vaccine, but they don't have a choice. Dana says that sneeze was a laughing out loud moment. Yeah, so listen, everywhere in the world, they're going to mandate this vaccine. Going back to the early 1900s, the U.S. Supreme Court has already said in times of pandemic, the government can mandate things like this, and it's not against your human rights. 
So Jonathan doesn't agree. He said, you're dead wrong on that commentary. Why not make it mandatory to hire Caymanians? Why not talk about a living wage? Why not take the politicians, put their people first who get the pay raise? Well, we've done all of that already. You talked about all of those things. So Stephen says, Great Britain is the most populated, most vaccinated place in the world. Actually, they're not. We said it this morning that, Bu, Bu, what was it? Buran or Bhutan or whatever is 90% vaccinated. So Great Britain is not the most vaccinated place in the world. In fact, let's see. Most vaccinated countries include, according to NPR, um, do we have just a list? This is like going on and on and on. We need a list. Mm. Let's see, vaccination tracker. So more than 4 billion people Vaccine dosages have been administered uh, worldwide, which equals to 52 doses for every 100 people. Um, and then we have, a, we have a map here. Let's have a look at this map because it's actually quite interesting in terms of where people are getting vaccinated. All right. So this is the world map of vaccination records. Um, so the green, the darker it is, the higher it is. So looks like it's like 60% plus if it's darker green. So some areas in Europe, look at poor Africa. Lord have mercy. Mm, mm, mm. They're under vaccinated in Africa. Mm. And you'll soon hear, oh, they're trying to kill off the poor Africans. Well, why are they getting vaccinated? So by country, vaccinations by country, we have UAE, Malta, Bahrain, Uruguay, Chile, Qatar, Iceland, Canada, Aruba, Singapore, child, the UK all the way down the list. What are you talking about? They're not that high in lists, I'm sorry to say. 79% in the UAE, Malta has 79%, Bahrain has 67%, Uruguay has 74%, wow. Chile, 73%, Qatar, Iceland, the UK is at 70%. So, um, So, of course, they're still focusing on the elderly, 60s, 70s, and older, frontline workers, doctors, and nurses. And that kind of explains why, with the third and fourth wave now, the fact that a lot of um, younger people are the ones who are starting to get it, to be quite frank. So, Wanda points out that childcare and homeschooling played a part in some people getting back to work. Yes, and this is an issue, to be fair, that has to be for those people who have children, that certainly has to be um, looked into. However, for a country that offers free education, especially once they're out of the primary level, and you can get education assistance even at that level to put them in daycare, there should be no reason why a child is stuck at home with an unemployed parent. And that's probably the worst place for a child to be, to be quite honest. They themselves need to be in an environment which is developing their social skills and um, their educational skills and so on. Shane says, <laughs> NAU is only for rejects that Caymanians married and dumped. Oh Lord, now government takes care of them. It's corrupted to its core. They make it so difficult in order to discourage people. If you're lazy and worthless, you get help. But if you need a hand up or found yourself in a difficult time, forget it. Wow. Mm -mm 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 -mm. What a mess. Well, that is in line with um, 
let me see here now. That is in line with what somebody was saying to me last night. Let me tell you what her messages were. She was frustrated with the NAU system and said, um, good morning, Sandy. This was at 12.04 in the morning, by the way. Why is NAU officers um, asking detective questions to poor people? I gave them their requirements, but still they need more proof. This is so freaking difficult. And I said, wow. I mean, there are things that they'll have to answer to in terms of audits, et cetera, et cetera. She says, they ask me about my marriage, about my kids, where they're staying, if I have a savings account, what do I do with my money that's left over? And I said, well, those are not unreasonable questions when you're talking about public funds. They're not a private donor that can just choose to give you money arbitrarily. Remember how we were talking about the whole situation with um, the government ignoring the questions put to it by doctor's hospital, government agencies and departments have an obligation because they're spending money from the public purse. And with that comes a great deal of accountability. And so they have to be held accountable. They will be audited. And they are subject to fraud because as, who was it that was just making that comment? As Shane said, there are a lot of fraudsters out there who are looking to take advantage of government. That's what they do, they're professional fraudsters. We've had some on this show talking about how they can go out there and buy here by the pound and get plastic surgery done and no one must question them. Huh? No one must question them while they are doing the most right? To take advantage of government. And their attitude is what's my money. Where the hell are you getting money from if you're an NAU? And that is why NAU has to ask these questions. That is why it's so this person, unfortunately for her, she's in a bit of a predicament where she needs to get out from where she is. And she's telling NAU, I need to find a place. Listen, everybody suffers for the poor people who just do whatever they want to do. Mm -mm -mm. A mess. Uh, one person comments on WhatsApp that some people that expect government to solve all their problems and then blame the government for everything, they don't want to do anything for themselves. So, you know, this is the difficulty of it. So Emma says government needs to bring in a group that doesn't know any of these NAU clients and investigate some of their clients because many elderly mentally challenged are receiving assistance and not seeing a penny of it. And like Cece said, many are getting it and using it to live a lifestyle of glamour while their children are going to be hungry and there are people out there that really need it and can't get it. And this is why when they're scrutinizing the system now, Listen, if they're only scrutinizing some people and not everybody, then clearly that is an issue. Everyone should be um, subject to the same level of scrutiny. So we've got Cece joining the program. Good morning, Cece. Good morning, Sandy. What's and shaking? I just, like, I just like to say that's what it pisses me off with NAU because NAU picks and choose. They know who abuses the system, but they picks and choose who to assist and who not to assist. How NAU has a list of apartments that accepts NAU rentals and still tell a mother with kids that is practically homeless they need to find a place. You understand? When they have that list right there at the front desk, you know, they help who they want to help. Like when one of their friends come in or someone they like come in that asks for rental assistance and say they can't find none, they say, well, see, see contact details here, call one of these and see if they can help you. But then somebody else come, you need to find a place. 
That's mm. not right. That is not right. I think that everybody in Cayman, whether unemployed, that are unemployed Caymanians mm -hmm. that are seeking employment should have cynical coverage. They should have cynical coverage. We shouldn't have to wait until it's an emergency to run in NAU to get cynical coverage. That should be mandatory. Anything can happen at any given time. Sickness has no time. You understand? That mm -hmm. they need to push. We're tired of having these conversations about what should be mandatory, what needs to be done. We need to see action. We've wasted votes for over decades. When will all we talked about be put into action is the question. Mm -hmm. um, Irvin says someone is reporting your live. I don't know what that means. Um, reporting it for what? <laughs> um, well, we still have 285 people here, so I don't know what they're reporting it for. But anyway, um, are they upset that Crosstalk only has three people watching? What, mm -hmm. what are they reporting it for? That's Cindy. Bye. <laughs> Cindy. Um, you going already? Where are you going? No, no, no. Already. Oh, I was going to say, Cindy, point taken. Um, do you think that there's any issue with any of you asking the questions that they ask, as long as they ask it of everybody? I, I think the questions need to be asked. Mm -hmm. It needs to be asked because you have a lot of Caymanians that are married to these Jamaicans or Spaniards or whatever nationalities they are in collecting all a thousand dollars to 600 per month for them to get their status and still need us any u assistance that's a no-no mm -hmm. for me a lot of people really do abuse the system what's the point of you being in need of help and go get married to somebody that you need to help also that that'll make no sense Mm -hmm. You understand? Like, I understand everybody has to start from somewhere. You have to crawl before you can walk. But a lot of these men come here and don't want work, don't want to do nothing. Oh, government, I mind my woman. So I included in that. You understand? Like, some people just don't have no ambition. Mm -hmm. Some people use this the excuse they could find in the world just not to get a re as a reason to not get out there to go and look. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, Majority of my experience came from volunteering. I used to do Meals on Wheels. I used to do community projects. I used to do so many things. And that that helped me uh, as an experience wise. You can't sit on and say, oh, I don't have a job. So, you know, it's hard for me, whatever. Get out there. A lot of these big CEOs, managers, supervisors does volunteer work. So you don't know who you can buck up into. It could be an opportunity exactly. for you. That's a you good understand? point. Yes, very you good just point, never Cindy. Know. But I want to highlight some of these organizations that are only doing it for a sham. Yeah. Because I asked to volunteer for a specific organization and they said that they had all the help that they need. But when they're doing other big projects, they would have sure called me for assistance. Sandy, I've seen them done many big projects. And all now, then I reached, they probably lost my contact information. <laughs> but then I see people volunteering with them only to get their naturalization or status because, you know, you have to volunteer or give back or whatever in order to qualify. And that's all some of these organizations are there for. They don't want, they don't want Caymanians help. They want help their own friends to get in, to do what they need to do, the time that they need, to, the timely manner that it needs to be done in order for them to submit their application to be naturalized. Mm-hmm. So, by any you need to ask questions to be honest. But like you say, the good suffers for the bad. But mm -hmm. any you need a clean up. They need a clean up. Some of them too comfortable. You you swear say the money coming out of their pocket mm -hmm. to the way how how they has people inside there treating them like dogs. I think people be at their lowest, their extreme lowest to going to any you to ask for help. You understand? And then to go in there and have them treat you like a dog. Mm -hmm, like like you're mm -hmm. some worthless animal in the streets that they're forced to help. No, sweetheart, you would not have a job if it wasn't for the people needing help. That entire department would be useless if it wasn't for the people. So the quicker they get that through their head. Well, I'm sure they could find other jobs in government that have shortages. <laughs> so I, well, I'm not I'm not sure up. that that's I'm not sure that that's justification for why they have a job, but um the point is somewhat taken. 
Well, because they, well they, they might have a job, but government also is spending a lot of money on NAU. Well, they're not, doing, NAU. they're not doing their job properly. Then they need to find a different career because helping people should be a passion. That should be, we shouldn't have to go into NAU and see their sour faces. You understand? Like you, you're begging them food vouchers, rental, or anything of a sort. No. What is a cynical coverage, Sandy? And that's something that should be given freely. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Especially when it's involving kids. Well, Balka says that NAU helps people of Caymanian last names. I've had my, I have my status in naturalized. I applied more than five times, but then they, uh, it denied it, I think is what she meant to say, with me because of my last name. Like I say, it who you know, they, they, they just like government, it who you know up inside there. Because mm -hmm. it works, kisses go by favors up inside there. And that's why they'll never like me because I can't speak up. Um, Elizabeth says that NAU needs field agents, inspectors. They're catering to 10,000 people and they're overwhelmed. And they're not hiring. Well, if they, need, um, if they need field agents, does that mean that they have to hire, hire more people? They're not hiring because up to, Listen, up to the other Cindy, day. Stick up in. Do they really need field agents? Or do they just need people who are internet and Facebook and social media savvy? Because most of those who are using NAU, all you have to do is go to their social media profile. No, I think they the need. Parties. I think they need field agents. You know why? Social mm -hmm. social workers should be able to pop up at any given time to yes. inspect a place mm -hmm. or to you understand follow up on any changes. Yes. Follow up to see if where you are. Huh? No, I think it's a good idea. I, I would volunteer to do that. Detectives. I would seriously, yes, not really detectives, but like reports, bring back in reports to say, well, I visited this one and she showed me proof where she's applying to jobs. She's got registered with Passport to Success. You know, make some progress, but you need field agents to also inspect these apartments because any you dishes out all 12 Oh God, I was going to say that. I was going to say that. They dishes Very out good. 1200 to $1,300. To these 1993 bathrooms and kitchens they need to shut those people down they should not be renting well, you're, you're lucky if that's the only problem because most of them are actually health hazards exposed electrical wiring and all sorts yes. of stuff that they expect people to live in a hole in the wall and here's the worst part you would think that those would be the cheapest apartments but instead um those tend to be the most expensive oh. You have people that are telling families that they need to vacate the apartment because they're going to use it for quarantine because they realize they, they can make more money off of it. You have people that are out there that are friends with a person and say, you know, I applying to any of you and I want to put you as my landlord so we can get money. We split it. A lot of that mm -hmm. is going on, Cayman. A lot mm -hmm. of that is going on, Cayman. So we need mm -hmm. field agents. We need them. Mm -mm. I would wow. be an asset to any of you because trust me when half of them people come in and see my face, they'll turn around to how boss and hype they is on social media for true. Mm -mm. Wow. Anywho, Sandy, it was nice having a conversation with you. Yes. So next time I got to get and, ready for work. And um, yes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to link you later because um, CC has volunteered to be one of the people, along with her kids, that's going to go and clean up some of the sargasm. So I'm going to get you some bags for that project. Awesome. When are you thinking that you guys will be able to do that? We can start today if we get the stuff. Okay. All right. Give me, um, after the show, I'm going to go and get some bags. Will do. Thank All you. All right. Good, good. All right, folks. So um, some interesting comments there from Cece. Thank you so much. Thank you, Miss Marcia. Uh, Debbie um, is joining us, Elizabeth Joy San. So Cece reached out yesterday after she saw the sargasm video and has volunteered her and her children to go and be part of the solution. She just needs bags. Um, she is a mother that, you know, has obligations. And so she can't necessarily afford to go get the bags. So I told her I'll get her the bags. Um, I was going to call D-O-E or D-E-H, D-E-H, I think. But child, by the time you call them and wait for somebody to call you back, five years would have passed. So I said, I just can't be bothered sometimes with the bureaucracy of it all. 
So I um, instead have uh, decided to um, just go and do it myself. Why not? This is the beauty of, of the world that we live in, folks. We don't always have to wait on somebody else to do something. So Flashpoint say, I encounter too many young ladies with three, four, and five children on NAU assistance. Mm -hmm. um, Anne says, NAU needs Cece. So, um, you know, she's a motivated young lady. And I think that, that a lot of different areas and departments can put her to good use. Uh, Vernita, thank you so much. By the way, today's Thursday. There is a community uh, meeting in Windsor Park. Hold on one second now. Let me look up my little Windsor Park group. So if you live in the Windsor Park area, um, please come out to this community meeting tonight. I'm going to post up some of the details here. Um, and I'll post this. I need to find a better image of this because this isn't quite the right image. So Khadija says that I've been denied coverage to have my daughter back in 2019. And the lady that deals with me told me my baby father must go look a second job knowing that he's here in a permit and that we laid there and made a baby and how he must step up and get a second job. I've never felt so humiliated in all of my life. Hmm. I left her crying with my seven month old and never looked back this morning. I told myself I was going to try again for coverage and let's see what the reply would be this time. Wow. That's really sad because Khadija, if you're in need and your husband is working, see, I would think that those are the very people that you would try to help because you at least see somebody working. Someone's trying. So what degree of assistance do they need? They don't need everything. They're not completely going to be reliant on NAU. So why not offer some assistance? Like I'm a bit um, dumbfounded by that type of response from NAU especially when a child or a baby is so incredibly young because child day costs a lot. That's why I say to these young people that if you also go into NAU assistance, one of the objections, um, Ms. Morna cracking me up. She's not going to drink no more coffee until she get her CMR mug, she said. One of the um, things I think should be mandatory as well as getting out there and helping with community projects is birth control. No one on NAU should be having another child. Because when you have another child, you're basically saying to me <clears throat> that I figured it out. Um, I can afford another child. <clears throat> and so that's why I'm getting pregnant. When I know you're operating by the oops, the Britney Spears, oops, I did it again syndrome. You can't afford to have accidents when it comes to having children, folks. So you have to agree to be on long-term birth control. So you come in and we're going to help you for six months initially. We really reevaluate the situation and go from there. Well, guess what? You're going to get some form of, some form of birth control that's good for at least six months. Now I know what y'all thinking. Well, this is my body. And I can do it. No, 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 TD. Not. Honey child, not when you on government assistance. We are paying for you. All the community is paying for you to have rent paid, food vouchers, blah, blah, blah. So you give up something for that benefit. And what you give up is the ability to have any more children that you cannot afford. Because I'm sorry, but if you're an NAU, you can't afford no children. No more. So if you come with one, we don't want to hear about baby number two. In another six months. And this idleness that I was just talking about earlier. Trust me. Are people staying home all day? Uh, with nothing to do but to lay down with their man is what's making you get pregnant. So we put you to work. Oh, child, definitely random drug test. Listen. NAU needs to be redone with some stricter rules in place. Stricter rules in place for landlords and their shenanigans. 
So the few that want to rent to NAU, they're abusing the system and taking advantage of NAU because they know they mightn't get paid on time because NAU also needs to sort that out. So let's talk about the top NAU issues since we're on the topic of NAU. Number one, inspection of landlord tenancy premises. The same way they have people applying, I know this is difficult because they already have enough people who don't want to be in the whole NAU pool. But when someone comes forward and says, I want to be an NAU landlord, because they know they might get paid on time, but eventually they didn't get paid. And sometimes they get a paycheck for all five, six, seven months at a time. And it's into the thousands of dollars. So they're also taking advantage of the system. They feel like just because it's an NAU client, they can treat them like shit, like dogs, treat them any kind of way. And that's wrong too. You have to be willing to treat your tenants with some degree of dignity. So yeah, make those people fill out an application, vet them, do inspections of their places. You can't have people living in dangerous environments. Somebody eventually gonna get hurt in one of these houses and they're gonna sue government because they're gonna say, government NAU should have had a policy in place where these landlords were subject to some sort of oversight. And that is just not happening. Another area that there's complete lack of oversight. I have been to some NAU holes in the walls because they're really not a proper apartment. The people them do have nothing. I remember during COVID, one day I used my emergency pass uh, status to drive all the way to West Bay from Newlands to deliver some food to a young lady. It was a public holiday. And you had approved her to stay at this place, but they hadn't yet approved her food voucher. So she wasn't able to even go get food, which I was like, what? Do they not have emergency food voucher approval process? Like, I don't even know how that happened. But anyway, I was able to take her some eggs. We were in the middle of lockdown, folks. And I knew the difficulty of if you didn't just go to the grocery store, you wasn't going for the next week. So I was like, oh, man. So I had to send out a WhatsApp to my WhatsApp news group. And I'm like, please, anybody have pasta, canned goods, maybe a couple eggs, anything. And we started getting some stuff together. Some people had some spaghetti that she could cook and whatever. And then come and find out the poor child, the apartment comes with nothing for her to cook. No pots and pans, no nothing. Now, you know, if you're renting an NAU apartment, you know these people are not going to have probably their own pots and pans. So you can't have a little cheap set of pots and pans ready to go when you have a new tenant coming in or whatever. Those, those people don't care. So when I found where she was staying in West Bay, I was shocked at the condition of the place. And right outside her doorstep, look like two little gang bangers sitting on there smoking marijuana. I was like, Lord Jesus. Mm-mm-mm. So anybody can jump up and say, oh, they want to be an NAU landlord and no one is checking who they are, what they're doing, what they're allowing, nothing. So that needs to happen. Um, in relation to safety of the children, that sort of thing, that's why inspections of those locations is really important. There's one landlord, one NAU landlord that has a pool. She is just an NAU landlord. That's who she, that's her clientele. Why she has a pool in the courtyard, which is a direct risk to those poor children, only God knows. I really don't know. I'm sitting there going, a pool? But yet every two seconds, she's turning off the water and the CUC because one tenant didn't get their NEU application in time and everybody else has to suffer. You see, that kind of foolishness shouldn't be allowed. Now, you know when these people start... The NAU clients are lying to NAU. The landlords are lying to NAU, all this sort of thing. They're complaining, oh, NAU don't pay on time, blah, blah, blah. Well, some years ago, I give the past government their credit, NAU introduced this option where they'll pay you online through direct payment to your bank. So gets there quicker. There's no sending a purchase order to central government, waiting for somebody in finance to blah, blah, blah. No, they'll do it online. It probably saves you a couple of days at least, right? Okay, now here, yeah. This one claims that, oh, well, 
she's applied for that and she never heard back from NAU and this, that, the next thing. I said, really? I said, wow, that's not good. Let me start asking some of my sources what's really going on here. I don't know why y'all decide to lie to CMR, honey child, because it never works out in your favor. Lo and behold, she's the one who was lying. Tell my NAU wasn't paying her in time because blah, 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 blah. She applied for direct deposit and they never called her back. What ended up happening? Let me tell you the true story now. Apparently, she was not paying her mortgage. Say what? Let me repeat myself. She was not paying her mortgage. So one of the eligibility requirements for you to get direct deposit is you need to be up to date with your own mortgage payments. And so I don't know if that's, I mean, that's an NAU requirement. And I don't know if they've spoken to the banks and kind of how this works or whatever. But that money should be going towards paying her mortgage. And instead, they have to write her a check, which I'm like, well, what's the difference, really? But, you know, she can go cash a check and put it where? Maybe in another bank account that the, the bank doesn't know about, the one that holds her mortgage. But because she was a rear, in arrears in her mortgage, she wasn't eligible for that program. And she's lying about how she submitted the application, but nobody got back to her. Child, now you just made me find out all about your business because you're a liar. And why would you do that? Stupidity. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Anyway. And I'm looking at this landlord going, she driving a certain car that is very expensive and oversized for this island. She's going out there getting plastic surgery. She has other businesses doing the most, but you're not prioritizing your mortgage and then you want to blame that. I mean, normally that wouldn't be any of our business, but when you start to mix up government into your lies and you're blaming government, then we got a problem. CC says uh, she's been denied many times and you doesn't get back to her. They don't even have someone to answer the phone for heaven's sake. No one ever answers. And I know um, I'd be wilding on CMR more times, but my customer service skills is bougie. So she says she's basically qualified to at least answer the phone. Oh my gosh. Jonathan says, let's acknowledge the reason for this welfare state. It's a purposeful act, which is and was designed to facilitate the de deposition, disposition of a people of their own economy, it was born of institutionalized corruption from the start and remains as such. Dana says she's tired of people spitting out babies and don't have a rent, red cent to their name all over the world, not to mention Catholics single-handedly overpopulating the world. <laughs> well, they do have that policy, child. Uh, Brenda says she agrees that NAU is enabling this. If you're asking for assistance and a condition should be strict, contraceptive, contraceptive use and proof. No more babies until you're self-sufficient. The system is crazy. I agree. It does enable people because there's no requirements. They can do whatever they want. So they need to put something in place for the landlords. I mean, people have to live with some semblance of dignity, even if they're on government assistance. So the landlords are trying to scam the government. Some NAU people are trying to scam the government. It's no wonder this place is in a hot mess. Um, Marcia says, I have a couple cases of adult pampers for seniors. Can I send them to you to give to the Pines or some seniors? Um, Marcia, are you just able to drop them off yourself? Is probably the better option. That'll save a couple trips. Um... Dana, good morning. Cece says nothing involving money goes right when it comes to, never mind. Good morning, Nathina. Elizabeth says there are people living in old tool sheds. What the heck? No, sir. 
Uh, yes, Dana, I'm a little bit busy, to be honest. Um, your best bet, any of the homes. So there's the West Bay Golden Age home, um, but even the Pines, I'm sure would be grateful. Sometimes it is really hard for me to, um, oh, you live in Canada. Wait a minute, Canada? So how are you going to get them to me? You're going to ship them from Canada? Um, I would suggest that probably somebody in Canada might be able to use them. Find a home close by. Because the cost of shipping alone and then customs duty, it wouldn't be worth it. It would probably be better just to go to Progressives and buy a case of, of um, you know. But I appreciate the thought for sure of you thinking about us. Um, all the way from Canada, but the logistics of that probably wouldn't make it uh, logical. Happy Thursday, Miss Emma. Um, no, Marcia, I don't think that makes any sense because then Customs is going to put all kinds of questions to that. Um, donate them locally. Support your communities wherever you live. Support your local communities. What else, what other suggestions do we have for NAU? Hire a receptionist, clearly. Um, have people trained in customer service, but this isn't a regular customer service course for those individuals. This has to be like a speciali specialized course for so social workers, NAU workers, that sort of thing. No, honey child, you think it won't cost anything. You try talking to customs. The ringer that they put you through to get anything here is ridiculous. You know, sometimes you have an item that needs to be replaced or repaired or whatever. And some of these companies in the U.S. don't actually send you anything stating that. So I've got one right now. I need to replace a kettle. Child, I've gone on the brinks again. And I contacted the company. They're really good about it. And I said, well, can I get an invoice or something stating that this is, you know, because it's still under warranty and it's, you know, and they're like, no, we don't do that. Because they they live in the U.S. and they operate for. So I'm going to have my freight forwarder send it in. And now I have to try to convince customs that, hey, here's my original receipt. I paid for this item just a couple months ago. It's already gone bad. Comes with a three-year warranty. It's like a rigmarole to get it in. And it's still always discretionary on the part of customs. They don't have to give you anything duty free. And the headache of having to do that, believe me when I tell you, it just isn't worth it. Um, that reminds me actually, I wanna fill out my customs form today. Um, so yes, this is, why can't I find a blank customs form? Anybody work for customs? Um, that can send me one return form, let me see. Is this a blank one? Customs border certificate of registered articles taken abroad. No, that's articles taken abroad. That's not the same one. There's a very different one for when an item is. Um... Oh, no, this is the same form. Hmm. How is it that I have it electronically and then I have one that I was filling out? Oh, honey child, modern technology. Name of owner. Oh, yes, I'll fill this one out later. All right. Um. So, yes, uh, any of you needs a little bit of help. What else are we going to recommend to them? So um, hire some field workers, enforcement officers. That's a good idea. Because like I said, we keep seeing these people who we know are taking advantage of the system. Everybody knows it. Uh <laughs> Lazara says the next round of mugs should say, yes, honey child. I smile every time I hear you. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, in terms of field workers, enforcement workers, I was thinking about this. Maybe they also need to have an enforcement hotline, like a 1-800-RAT-OUT-YOUR-FRIEND kind of hotline. Because y'all be upset that your friend's getting NAU assistance and living their best lives with hair by the pound and all this kind of stuff. So maybe you need to rat them out. Have a tipster email and a tipster hotline. 
Mm-hmm. Yes. That's not a bad idea. Um, okay, somebody else wants to help with the cleanup if it's on a Sunday morning uh, as they work on Saturdays. Okay, let's find out. Some people who is not in the tourism have a job, still have a job and still apply for the stipend. Well, that's why some other people can't get it because there are people abusing it. It's a hot mess. It really is a hot mess. Mm, mm, mm. That'd be the next mug. It's a hot mess. Yeah, but you need to be able to report it to someone who is, that's like their job. You report it to them and then their job is to um, ensure that it's being followed up with and properly investigated. And put some penalties in there too. Because it should be a penalty, and I know that it is, to defraud the government. Right? And start taking some of these people to court for that sort of thing. And then they're going to wake up and realize that they can't get away with it. So I'm sure that there's some any of you people who are doing the best that they can. And they are stressed out. So, you know, let's be supportive of them, I suppose, where we can. But we also need to raise the bar and raise expectations. So again, take it from us. There has to be some accountability in the part of people receiving NAU assistance. Every month, make them show you that they're out there actively looking for a job. At least now they require them to be registered through, um, what's the name of the jobs came in? Fixed jobs came in too. People are sick and tired of complaining about that portal. Uh -uh. You see here, not responding to emails is just ridiculous. It's unprofessional. Ugh. If they are if they are um legit trying to get this right. The basics of having a proper communication system, receiving emails, responding to emails, like emails should go in a pool. And again, technology can help y'all with this. Contact your IT support team. And then they should be assigned to different people. Once you have a case manager within NAU, so CC is starting the process, she has assigned the case manager. There should also be some limit on how many people that person gets, because let us be fair. The one person who actually does their job really, really well is the one person who's going to be un inundated with everybody wanting to go to that one person. So maybe, I don't know what would be a fair caseload, but 150, 200 people per NAU employee. But the point is you don't overburden people and then you have other people who are not picking up the slack. They're ignoring emails. They're doing the most, whatever. There has to be some equity in how the workload at NEU is also being distributed. And this constant thing, like Cindy says, they help who they want and who not, who not need the help getting it. This is what people say all the time about NEU. NEU, it's time for you to change that negative impression of what it is that you guys do and how you do it. You need some help with your PR, first of all. I'm just saying. But you do need to fix a few things in order for that to change that message. It's a hot mess. I mean, honest to God. <sighs> there are those of us who pray every day that you never have to go to any of you for any help. 
because you'd probably starve first. The headache of it all. And then I hear about business people going to NAU, um, getting all sorts of help. Business owners who still have businesses and stuff. And I said to the person when they're like, oh, this person, I said, no, 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 that can't be right. I said, they're probably at NAU for one of their workers, like trying to help them out. Ay, ay, ay. Juanita says, morning, Sandy. You never answered my question last week with the mask. What a hot mess. And um, where do you get them? Oh, yeah. So I had the ones that I have. I had them made by a guy locally. They're probably not all that cost efficient for him to do it. I do like the material that he uses. Um, it is like a spandexy, thicker material. But I'm, I'm working on uh, trying to see if I can get some masks made because the truth of the matter is soon enough when we start to reopen our borders, the government will have to mandate mask wearing again. Or um, they've actually changed the law where businesses can tell you you can't come in here without a mask. Mm -mm. So everybody will have, a, I carry three masks in the car all the time. So all of you um, should have a mask as well. So I'm thinking maybe... Maybe the next, well, we're doing a smaller order of mugs and then that's it for mugs. If you don't get one this time, I'm sorry for you, but you had a luck. Um, so yes, maybe we'll do that. Thank you, Elizabeth, for reminding us of some of the positive things that NAU has been doing. They've launched a district program and they are going into individual districts. Now, I don't know where the schedule is because of course, um, maybe it's on Facebook or something. Sometimes we see the schedule and then other times we just don't see it. Um, again... PR, folks, is important. Uh, people are not going to know what they don't know. Okay. So um, get your information to us. RCIPS is having a Windsor Park community meeting this evening. Let me share this with all of you. If you live in the area, folks, go out. Be part of the solution in your own communities. It's one thing to complain, but it's another thing to take responsibility and be part of the solution. So Jess says that you don't starve first, you'll starve while waiting. <laughs> so someone informed that she has a family of three and they received $900 in food vouchers and NAU gave another family of six $350. It's who you know in NAU. Well, here's the thing, right? There could be facts, and I can't speak to those two situations, that the family of three was able to argue and put forward that the family of six didn't. And this is why sometimes you can't always judge a book by its cover. Let me give you a perfect example of this, actually. Yeah. Yesterday during the show, someone reached out and said to me, oh, yes, that foster situation, that's a certain person who's supposed to be getting a job and um, blah, blah, blah. And this person, you know, it's like a, a guy that nobody likes and they've been trying to get rid of him and, and um, Foster's just trying to keep him here by helping him get PR and all this kind of stuff. So you all know me and Woody already. I just called, no, I, I messaged him. I said, Woody, this is the message that we're getting. Woody's like, people are really misinformed. And we're actually gonna be doing a few interviews with Woody, because I said to Woody, if people don't know, y'all know how y'all is. If you don't know, you gotta make it up and make assumptions. So sometimes it's important, even as a private business, to put the information out there and put the correct information so people get it right. So this person was making an assumption of who this is. She said it's a work permit holder, who's already there at the Kimana Bay location. Come to find out the store manager job is not for Kimana Bay. Hmm. A little something called facts. Um, it seems like a Caymanian that they have employed is actually leaving the company as store manager and going to open up his own business. Good for him. And that has resulted in a vacancy. So they're moving people around to different locations. And they're going to pull the person who is at 
what's the name of the store again? Um, Price Right, who wasn't really their ideal, like they need to find, remember how I was telling you guys about big box stores and soft retail? They want to find someone with specific experience in big box retail, really. And they've never been able to do that. So they're going to take that person, put them at the location where the Caymanian is leaving and make it vacant. And they're now recruiting for Price Right. So that ad isn't for one of the grocery stores. It's actually for Price Right. But you see, when people don't have information, they make all kinds of assumptions. And someone started assuming that it was for this, this guy from Canada, they said, which apparently nobody likes, is what they said. So apparently he has been here a while and he's applying for his PR. Um, um, they are not helping him with his PR as this other person is assuming. So don't, don't get all confused um, and make assumptions when they ain't right. So thank you so much. We have... A few people sending me the information on the district locations with NAU and some other community events. Let me share these with you now before we end the program. Marcia says, thoughtful Thursday, lots of food for thought. That's for sure. Boy, we can cover some stuff on this show. So here's NAU. Uh, again, NAU, you have an open invitation to come on the cold hard truth and talk to the people directly. These are some West Bay locations coming up. They were there July 23rd. They're going to be back on August the 20th, September the 17th, October the 15th, November the 17th, and December the 17th. Folks, if you live in West Bay, put these down. This is Andre Ebanks. He shared this on his page. Thank you so much. We also have... Um, an additional one here. NAU's in your district. This is Gun Bay. So if you live in the Gun Bay East End area, they're going to be at the Gun Bay Center on Friday, August the 6th. I believe that's next week, Friday, actually. Mm -hmm. It sure is. Friday, August the 13th. Friday the 20th. Do you guys remember um, some months ago, I did this little trial thing where I did kind of like a community update message. And I wanted to see, I did look in a video format and I wanted to see how you guys would respond to it. I think it was fairly well received. Um, I just haven't had time to make it a regular feature, but I really do want to do that because I think like these little announcements, sometimes it's like they're all over the place and you can't find them. So I want to do like a single little five minute maybe a couple times a day, uh, snippet of where you can find all of these upcoming events, like an events kind of schedule. And don't forget that we actually do have an events calendar. So I'm going to send this to the young lady who manages our events calendar with a view to um, her adding them to the calendar as well. So thank you. Um... Yeah. All right. Anyway, folks, I've got some meetings and stuff that I must attend today. We are waiting on a court decision from this um, DPP's office thing. Very, very interesting trial. Once the jury has come back with a verdict, we need to talk about this because the situation at the B DPP's office sounds like a triple hot mess. It really sounds bad. So we're going to delve into it, but we don't want to... It's a jury trial, so we don't want to get into it yet and taint any sort of situation, but we will we will talk about it later on. Um, so Vernita's asking again, how can she get her vaccines? I'm going to send it to those same people again and ask them one more time what the options are. Because this is the second time you're asking a question. And I did send it. Believe me, you. I will send it again. Thank you, Perla. Appreciate it. Thank all of you who are sending me all the stuff on WhatsApp. 
Um, I'll do a notification. So again, this evening, folks, um, go to the Windsor Park meeting. Um, and then we shall take it from there. All right. Oh, we got to get to DPP. Don't worry. Oh, child. Ugh, we have so much to say about them. Our little friend Darlene Oku taking the stand and apparently, according to her co-workers, being dishonest. Oh, surprise, surprise. Mm -mm -mm. We'll talk about it. You guys have a wonderful day. Thank you for tuning in to another edition of The Cold Hard Truth. Make sure to check Facebook for showtimes and more information and the latest news at caymanmarlroad.com. Subscribe to our IG and Facebook pages to get the latest happenings.